All right, we're going to talk about a bunch of resistors today. Uh, this is what's known as an R2R ladder um, because there's R's and there's two R's. So these values, whatever they are, they're double here. So if this is a 1K resistor, this is a 2K resistor. 100K resistor, 200K resistor. It's always double, okay? And this circuit will function basically the same regardless of what value you choose. There's reasons to choose these values, but once those values are choose, then the mathematics works out. It's just R and 2R. So what is this thing? Well, um, it's sort of a poor man digital analog converter. You have four voltages here, and we can say that there's basically anywhere from zero volts to 10 volts. So you can have zero volts to 10 volts, zero volts to 10 volts, zero volts. And uh, depending on the uh, the way that you use these, you will get different outputs, okay? what's the the way that it's normally used is these you can kind of think as analog ones and zeros. It's either zero volts or ten volts, but not in between. So it's either zero or ten, zero or ten, zero, ten, zero, ten. And then you will get something on the output, okay? So you can imagine that you could set these up to get various voltages out here, right? If they're all zero volts, then you're going to get zero volts out. And if they're all high, then you will get all high out, except for that one. So that one's going to pull it down a little bit. So uh, you're going to you're going to get a little bit less than the full 10 volts here. You'll get a little bit less, and we'll talk about that. Okay. So um, these are quite handy because they're very inexpensive, and um, a lot of times they're the basis of actual D to A converters. If you look inside a D to A converter, you might see things like this. They're a little fancier, but maybe the basics is the same, all right? So um, you can do the fancy math on this, okay? And I'm not going to do that today. You can go online and look at all the math derivations and everything for this thing. But I'm going to show you the, uh, the formula that you end up with. All right, and here is the formula you end up with. The output is going to be the A voltage plus twice the B voltage plus four times the C voltage plus eight times the D voltage divided by 16. It, it, it's pretty it's pretty amazing, right? Two, four, eight. Um, you just keep doubling these, and then this one is 16, okay? So that is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16 on the bottom. So if these are all uh, 10 volts, you will have... 10 volts divided by uh, uh, times 15 sixteenths, okay? 15 sixteenths is the highest voltage you can get, all right? So 15 sixteenths of 10 volts. All right, you can add more of these. Uh, you can just keep going with this thing, okay? And you end up with a formula that looks like this. So this is the generalized formula. A plus 2B, 4C, 8, 16, 32, and then it's going to be divided by 2 to the N. So how many ever of these you have, in this case we had 4, so we had, so we had 2 to the 4th is 16, but here it's just 2 to the N. So you, you can, you can keep, keep it going with this thing, okay? So I think before we go any further, let's go ahead and wire one up and we'll play with it. All right, so here I've made a, forget this part of the board, I just junk. Um, but over here I've put a little uh, R2R ladder here, I'll show you a picture. Just made out of a bunch of 1K and 2K resistors, all right? Um, now, the way this board is made, I have the A, B, C, D coming on these wires, and then I can either jumper them to ground or to plus V. So that's what this little header here does, okay? So we can bring in some voltage over here, ground and plus, and now I'm going to get an output depending on how I have these uh, how I have these wires strapped. So let's set that up. All right. So the output is over here, and here's ground. And then we'll turn on our voltmeter. Okay. So we've got uh, zero volts because everything is zero zero zero. If I move the D voltage up to plus V, I'm getting two and a half volts, which is half of my input. I'm putting in five volts into the board, so I'm getting two and a half volts out by strapping that one. Let me strap this one and put that other one back down to ground. I get 
one and a quarter. Okay, you can see this is kind of a geometric thing, right? And then I move this up and you can kind of count uh, binary and, and the voltages will change over here. All right, so this is fun. You can make a table, you could graph it, you could kind of figure out what's going on. But um, let's go a step further, which should be really fun. All right, I'm gonna be using this little board here, which is a counter. It's using a GAL part, a GAL 22V10. And this is from an old, an old project I did a while ago, and you might recognize it. Um, so I'm gonna turn this on, and you can see there we're getting binary counts. So this thing is, is doing its thing. All right, let's move this around. I'll move this away. And now I can move these wires over to here and use the counting of this thing. I need to have a common ground, so I need to put in one more piece of wire here that uh, connects the two grounds together. Ground there and ground there. Okay, now I can take these guys and move them over to this board. And I have them over here. There we go. And that one. All right, so they are now, they are now using, oops, what did I just do? Oh, I just pulled out my ground. <laughs> that was dumb. Push my ground back in my board here. Clip leads and wires and stuff always get in the way. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we are counting again. And we're going to look at the output. This time we're going to use an oscilloscope to take a look at the output because it should be changing with the count. Uh, let's see here. Where's my scope probe? Let's hook him up to here. And let's put him on a ground. Doesn't really matter. We'll put him on a ground over here. All right, so let's uh, take a look on the oscilloscope and we get a stair step. That's pretty cool. So as it counts, it's changing that R2, uh, 2R2 uh, values and we are getting a stair step from zero volts up to 15 sixteenths of five volts, okay? Um, and uh, it's doing its thing now. Um, this is as far as I was going to go with the, with a demo today, but then I then I noticed some interesting artifacts that I thought we would talk about. Um, one of the one of the nice things about this oscilloscope is it has very good resolution vertically. It has uh, sixteen bits. I have it at uh, twenty megahertz bandwidth, so I'm getting a full sixteen uh, sixteen bits of vertical resolution out of it. And I want to show you some things here. So let me move the camera a bit. All right, there we go. And we're going to have to zoom in, zoom in here. But I think you can see it's not just a single stair step. It's this funny little jaggy thing there, okay? And it's kind of wobbling up and down a little bit too. And so um, I was confused for a while what would have caused that little jaggy thing down there midstream. So it's mid count, right? It's, uh, oops, uh, it's count, count, count. Why, why is there a change mid count? Um, well, let's talk about a couple things. First of all, uh, this thing relies on these voltages being stable. Okay, and what if they aren't? <laughs> what if they aren't stable? Well, it'll get reflected on the output. So obviously we have some unstable voltages happening um, on the resistors because the resistors can't do that. <laughs> the circuit has to be able to, should be doing that, right? So what could be doing it over here? Well, the first thing I uh, imagined is maybe the LED, LEDs were hogging current and stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, remove remove the LED board, and oops, and see how things go. Didn't change it a bit, okay? Didn't it? Didn't really change it. We're still getting these little these little bumps here, and they get they get better and better as you go up. But we get these we get these funny little bumps. Well. I traced it down to the actual GAL part itself. The internal mechanisms of counting 
it's not a simple counter. It actually has some state machine in it to do the counting. And that state machine is going to change states uh, several times during the count. And during one of the state changes, it, 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 it uses a little bit more current and it steals it from the output and you get a, you get a small output change. Um, so it's interesting, you know, I mean, if you were using a microprocessor with latched output for this, probably wouldn't see it. If you're using a standard, you know, LS94 part, whatever, it, you probably wouldn't see it. But it happened to be an artifact of this gal. So I thought I thought that that's pretty interesting. Um, but I will I will want to mention one thing before we leave here, and that is um, I told you that you needed to have a, a, a either zero volts or, or say 10 volts here. And um, I'm not, I didn't talk about the input impedance to this thing, okay? So if you have a, a CMOS circuit, a, a, the output of a CMOS circuit is basically, is basically this. So it pulls up just as much as it pulls down and the output impedance in the upstate and the output impedance of the downstate are the same. And so a CMOS device um, is going to operate quite well with this thing. If you have a TTL uh, device, uh, it may it may look something like it may look something like this, where the uh, the output impedance to it's zero and the output impedance to plus is different. Okay, this is a simplified version, but um, you get the idea that that all TTL devices have pull-ups. They don't have a drive to high, they have a pull-up to high. So this will act completely different than this using a, uh, using a, uh, a ladder. All right, well, just a quick, uh, quick video of the day, having fun with some ladders. I had some ideas to use them, but maybe I won't now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, little digital analog converters are, you know, I squared C little devices are pretty cheap these days. So yeah, you might just want to go that route, but uh, it's good to know about this trick.